Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, it's a banner week for the Biden administration committing and also permitting grave crimes of injustice with huge implications for the future of our democracy. This is really about all of us here, guys. In the same week, they are continuing the prosecution of Julian Assange while also allowing Stephen Donziger to be jailed in what is effectively a corporate prosecution. First, let's start with Assange. We're going to be talking to Julian's brother, Gabriel Shipton, shortly about the U.S. government's ongoing appeal as they seek to extradite Julian so that he can be tried for the crime of doing journalism. Now, the U.S. government, of course, has been out to destroy Assange ever since he and WikiLeaks revealed war crimes being committed and covered up by our government. It all started with this video and warning that this is extremely graphic. This is collateral murder, and it showed U.S. soldiers indiscriminately killing civilians, casually celebrating it like it was a video game. Those targeted included two Reuters journalists who were killed, also two children who were wounded. Now, the official line from the Army was that the dead were largely insurgents and that the Reuters employees were killed in the crossfire. Even after a Reuters FOIA request, however, the government refused to release the video of the incident. Assange exposed their lies, showing that what actually occurred was mass murder. The soldiers involved, they were never tried for their crimes. The leadership that lied to the public over this and many other incidents, not to mention lying us into that war in the first place, we all know they never face consequences. Instead, it's Assange, the guy who revealed the truth, who has had his life systematically destroyed. The Obama administration, they engaged in aggressive surveillance of Assange, but they didn't prosecute him because they couldn't figure out how to do it without criminalizing all of journalism. Now, the Trump DOJ, they had no such qualms, led by Bill Barr. They decided to prosecute Assange, and they've been seeking his extradition from the UK ever since. This was after the Trump CIA, by the way, considered and discarded plots to assassinate Assange. The Biden DOJ under Merrick Garland, they have decided to continue that Trump prosecution, and they're even taking it a step further. After a court in the UK denied the US government's extradition request, they decided to continue to press the case, filing an appeal which is being argued in court right now. Now, if Assange is found guilty ultimately in the US, he could face a 175-year sentence. Gabe Shipton, again, is going to give us all the details of what is happening right now with that appeal. This is the gravest threat to press freedom in the world. And the U.S. media, so smug, so self-righteous over Trump's press insults, they have barely a word to say about any of this. It's almost like they don't actually care about press freedom, but only their own power and access. But that is not the only grave injustice being committed this week by the U.S. government. Not even close. We've previously brought you the story of Stephen Donziger. Donziger is that human rights lawyer who's been prosecuted for the crime of winning a landmark case against Chevron for their atrocities against the indigenous people of Ecuador. Let me just give a little refresher of the outlines of his story. Donziger won a $9.5 billion judgment against Chevron on behalf of his clients, Ecuadorians, whose lives had been destroyed and in some cases ended, thanks to that oil giant's wanton disregard for the law and for human life. Instead of expressing contrition, paying up, and reforming their ways, the company decided they would not pay a cent of that judgment and would instead seek to make an example out of Donziger so that no lawyer would ever want to come after them again. Chevron found a few friendly judges and sought, in their own words, to, quote, demonize Donziger. Frankly, it's worked. On a bogus contempt of court charge, they have gotten him disbarred. They have kept him in home confinement for more than two years. The case was so flimsy that U.S. prosecutors with the Southern District of New York, they refused to take it up. Instead, in an extraordinarily likely illegal maneuver, the court brought in Chevron-connected prosecutors to continue this crusade. Now, this is not just my interpretation of events either. Both the U.N. and Amnesty International have called on Donziger to be released as his prosecution and lengthy home confinement violates international law against arbitrary detention. The U.N. demanded Donziger be paid reparations for his illegal treatment. Instead, the latest Chevron-connected judge sentenced him to an additional six months in prison that is on top of the years that he has already served. In a lengthy diatribe at sentencing, that judge, Judge Preska, said of Donziger that, quote, it seems that only the proverbial two-by-four between the eyes will instill in him any respect for the law. This week, Donziger's appeal was denied, and yesterday, he was sent to a federal prison to serve out his six-month term. All of this for a trivial contempt of court charge for which no lawyer has ever spent a single day in prison. They have ruined this man's life. 
They've denied him of his freedom for years now, right, as his son was growing up, stripped him of his livelihood. Just compare that, for example, to the sweetheart deal pedophile sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein got down in Florida, 13 months on work release, relaxing at his Palm Beach office. But of course, Epstein was connected to the powerful. Donziger was challenging the powerful. Just as in the case of Assange, it is not the people who committed the crimes, who killed the civilians, who polluted the rainforest, who gave people cancer. They're not the ones who are held accountable. Instead, it's those working to expose those crimes and bring actual justice. And let's not leave it vague as to who is responsible right now in this moment. It is Joe Biden and it is Attorney General Merrick Garland. They could end this nightmare for Julian Assange and Stephen Donziger today. Please call Merrick Garland. I'll put the phone number in the description. Demand Donziger's release. Demand the charges against Assange be dropped. Demand actual justice. And with Gabe Shipton about to join us, I also want to say, please don't forget that aside from the societal injustice here, these are real human beings. They have families. They have people who love them, people who miss them dearly. The pain that has been caused to these people is a reprehensible moral outrage in and of itself. But it truly is a crime against all of us, all of us who depend on a free press, who want to live in a society where the powerful actually face accountability for their crimes, where you don't have a tier two, two-tiered system of justice, where the justice system is not just another arm of our corporatocracy. And shame on the media for relentlessly carrying water for the powerful by consistently ignoring all of their greatest crimes. And look, it all really came to a head this week with both Assange Mm -hmm. and Donziger. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.